we're bringing Boogie in to uh, take x-rays, make sure to see what uh, well the stones look now, and there's his name on our digital x-ray machine, and here's our anesthetic machine in our radiology area, and Isabel's making sure that Bogey is um, doing well by putting a pulse oximeter on his tongue, and the machine's waiting to measure how much oxygen is going through his body and how fast his heartbeat is. So, 84, there it goes. 91, there, that's what we like to see. This goes one of the protective uh, shields and the lead apron for taking x-rays. Next to the machine and she's going to put on the right KBB for all the numbers. And there. Then it uh, comes up on the screen. And You can see all the little stones in your in the urethra. In the x-ray you can see all the little urethral stones labeled lined up like billiard balls and they get stuck by the bone of the os penis uh, and you can see the kind of that group of them stuck there just like a bunch of billiard balls queued up. That's where I had to flush out and remove the stones to get rid of the blockage. So when we do a cystocentesis, we, we, it's easy when the animal's just on its back and there's the penis and right ahead of the penis or we can palpate the bladder and then we just put the needle in from the side and we can get urine. On an, even on an awake animal, it's pretty easy. And we'll analyze that for crystals and we'll do urinalysis. I wanted to just see, I'm curious, I have them on a, a special prescription diet and then my moist dog dish diet so I'm gonna put a, a just a drop I just need a drop or two on the slide and then I'm um, gonna put a cover slip on there and we're gonna look at look at it under the microscope and we're gonna see if there's crystals and, uh, so so far so good there's no crystals commonly get the struvite or the triple phosphate crystals in the oxalate you see on the left. Dalmatians get the uric acid crystals in the upper right. Moister food and better food and better ingredients will often help prevent stones and crystals. And that's what we're working on. Crystals turn into stones so we want to make sure we have the crystals stop so when we do the surgery to get the stones out that they don't reoccur. That's the problem with a lot of bladder stones and, and urinary tract infections in dogs. The crystals turns to stones and it keeps happening. Also, Bogey's blood work looks good. We drew Bogey's blood and we can see that his white blood cells and red blood cells are normal. Sometimes uh, you will get one right slightly out of the range, but that's not enough to cause any problems. Also, a pre-op blood work, which is this preoperative blood panel, which is a smaller panel that we use to check the internal organ shows that the glucose is normal, he's not diabetic, that his kidneys are working great, and his liver's working great, and he has enough protein in the blood. That's what we see from a, a blood panel. It doesn't show cancer, it doesn't show any kind of infections, it shows us, it doesn't show any kind of specific infections, viral or bacterial, it shows us that the, the body's working like it should. And so, Bogey's now laying down under, on the table. His vitals are normal. We're prepping him up. He's got shaved, shaved the whole area where we're going to do the surgery. He's both wrapping the tail so that it doesn't get in the way of the incision. And we're prepping up the, the area of the incision, which will be first the penis. And it'll be right down there. And that's where we're going to make a cut. So he's goes making sure the whole area is shaved real nice. So that there's no hair that gets in the incision because its hairs can be torn by it. We don't want that. And we prep it up. Like first we swab around the incision and then outward to make sure that all the bacteria are killed because we don't want any of our bacteria or the bacteria on the skin in his wound.
He's all prepped and ready, and now it's time for me to scrub all my uh, bacteria off. Scrub three times. Uh, and really gets a good wash so we, we get nice, clean, and sterile. So we dry our, our hands with a sterile drape. Sterile towel, I'm sorry. And then we going to put the drape on. We use a paper drape to put on. So that then now my, I make sure my hands are just as sterile as they can be for the surgery. Putting on gloves is always good. You, You've got on the inside of the glove, you can see the glove linings up there. So you put your gloves on and you don't touch the sterile surface. Sometimes I gown, but this is actually a pretty exterior procedure. And I won't need a gown for this one. And this, now with this hand I can touch anything, it's sterile. And we can do hand puppets if we had a light. But we don't want to do that right now. Well, we're going to put a drape on uh, where we're going to do our incision. And uh, we're going to get rid of, we're gonna, we know we're going to be working, um, putting a catheter in the penis to figure out where we're going to cut. And uh, we're going to put the towel clamps on to keep the drape in the right place. So we're going to make a cut right over the urethra. So we're going to cut down, get rid of most of the tissue. And there's the muscle. Um, we're going to move it to the side. So you can see the catheter going in and you can see this is the, the, the catheter. I can fill the catheter right in the urethra and there's the, the penis underneath of it. So I'm going to make a cut right over there. So I'm going to cut right in over the catheter and into the See the, you can see the catheter right down and there's the, it's bleeding on the edges but you can see there's the catheter and there's the urethra lining. So I want to enlarge it now. There's the penis and the urethra is on top and that looks like a lot of blood but it's not really. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the urethra and I'm going to sew it right to the skin with a series of sutures so that um, the urethra stays open and he can pee out all those little stones. And we don't want to tie it too tight because we don't want to cut off the circulation. This is what you need to do when you get old and can't see anymore. Doesn't that look attractive? I can sure see better. I sewed up the whole urethra to the skin. You can still see the catheter, but now you see the urethra spread wide open so that any stones that are in the urethra can come out easily. We're going to trim up some of the ratty edges of the suture. We must have nice suture edges so it doesn't bother our patient. So I'm going to trim. I'm going to trim these sutures up, well, some of the long ones. I want them long enough to pull them out, but not too long to irritate anything like this one. That'll irritate the incision. Well, you can see this 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 uh, catheter now is going to come out. It's a good shot. Ooh, see, and now it's coming out the end of the penis, so you can kind of get an idea of what's happening. We wanted to go back in the urethra, we just do that. And then we're going to push on the bladder and we're going to see if we can get the rest of the stones out. So you can see the little stones now, they're coming out. Those are the ones that are going to be passed. All those. So this little different one where these aren't huge stones, but they're all getting a whole bunch of them are getting blocked getting uh, blocked at the end of the bone of the penis right here. They're getting stopped up there. Now I don't want to say anything but that's not a real dachshunds and chihuahuas have a bigger penis than that. And it's just not big and so 
it's 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 got a tiny little hole and the bone is small in there so they get blocked up in that but we won't say anything It's a nice urine fountain. Wow. Nice stream. Look at all these stones that we're blocking up in there. So these should come out now with that nice big stream over the next few weeks. And we're not making any more. So we're going to send these for anal analysis. They were calcium, look like calcium oxalate crystals, but we'll get we'll take some for analysis. So there's the nice new pee hole called the urethrotomy. There's the lining of the urethra and the skin, and here's all the little crystals. Here's the stones. It looks like the one, the crystal that that um, that caused all the plugging is this one right here. And look at look at how pretty that looks. It even looks like it a cave. Maybe we'll look at that under the microscope and show it under the uh, in the digital viewer because that's like a that's like a stalactite. It's got a whole bunch of growth on there. Look at that. We'll look at that on the microscope. That's a good one. Crystal. Pretty big crystal I removed from right near the os penis. And it came back from the eye that is calcium oxalate crystal. Crystal. You can see how jagged it is. It is. And we'll see it under the microscope. Here's the stone under the screen of the microscope. You can see the big spikes. That's why they irritate the, bl the bladder and urethra. Can you imagine? So there's Bogey. He's laying on a little couch. So cute. And he's got his little <laughs> coat on because it's cold. And, and uh, I just want to show you, we're going to take the sutures out. Uh, but that's what the incision looks like after a couple weeks. Now it looks gross. And you can see the stitches up there. But the wound now will granulate in. Why do animals get bladder stones? Well, St bladder stones and urethral stones occur because some, some dogs and cats eat very dry, dry food and they don't drink enough of the magic ingredient life, water, in order to dilute this and, and produce urine, and dilute urine. So canned food actually has more water. If, if you look at the moisture percentage on a can of canned food, it has 70% water. I used to think, why in the heck would you buy water when you can have more of the food and not pay for so much water because this is more expensive? Well, it turns out, in cats, if the cats eat dry food, it causes more blockages in a lot of cats. But if they eat wet food, it dilutes their urine, makes them drink more water or consume more moisture so they don't have urinary problems near as much. So I have my cans on my can, my can. I have my cats on canned food. So I think the animals with urinary problems should eat more moist food. You can feed canned food, you can make home cooked food, or you can add water to their dry food. Water is the secret ingredient. If you add water and the kibbles swell up, then they will be more moist and the dog or cat won't have to drink so much to make up for the extreme dryness of the food. Because dry food and concentrated urine will make bladder stones. In our clinic, we've had a lot of dogs with crystals in the urines and bladder stones throughout the years, and even more lately. And I know it's because there's more purebreds and Bichons and Maltese and poodles are, are prone to them. Uh, little terrier types and I think though it's uh, a function of also the dry food diets because even when we use our prescription diets like SO and the urinary diets uh, they're dry and, and many dogs that still isn't enough and they still are plagued by these uh, crystals and stones. It's funny because in the human medicine they, were, they suggest that people for the treatment of the calcium oxalate stones which are the most common drink a lot of water and uh, in dogs and cats, cats especially, we found that canned food leads to less stones. So dog foods, for, for, for dogs with stones, I think it's very important to increase the water uptake. And you can do that by feeding canned food, raw food, and the homemade diet. And you can add the citrate with cranberry to the homemade diet to even help 
the poor dog uh, get rid of its stones a little more. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed all this video. I'm trying to make a little more videos with a little more background and then I'll do a more, little more variety in my videos hopefully. I took a little break because like everybody else I was a little sick with the flu. I hope all of you are not, aren't getting sick out there. Well I know many of you are but stay warm, drink lots of fluids, take care of yourself. Have a great day.